My brother was quite a guy, and I remember a lot. He was, as we all know, was a big fisherman. And um, Bob and I, I know that went more than once. I'm not sure who all was fishing. Of course, Uncle Robert, he would, he would, he could drown worms and men as fast as anybody. But he'd also knock them beers out. That that Bush Bavarian beer, he was really into that. He 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 drank a half a case in a couple of hours out there. Well, how about those cigars he's chewing oh, yeah. on all the time? He's chewing on. You cannot never, find a picture of Uncle Robert without a cigar. I was going to say, you never see him that he didn't have a cigar that was well chewed hanging out of his mouth. He, uh, he took me, uh, just the two of us, went to uh, down the Brazos River and the Nolan River where they connect. And he had this old, I think, Dodge station wagon, which is about, probably about a 50 model. And um, we would we stop and we'd get some bait. And, you know, he said, give me a couple dozen. Uh, <laughs> Minutes or whatever, but and he would always introduce me as his namesake. He says, My namesake, Robert. You know, he always, he always, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> talked about that. But anyway, uh, here again, you know, Robert and Aunt Frances were uh, wonderful folks, you know, and Aunt Frances was just, just as she was, she was, was, she was, she was did, did he dress like up as a ghost one time to carry y'all out there at, at his house? What's that? He, he dressed up like a ghost. Oh, kind yeah. of they lived off Blue Twelve there in the that near near Laurel Land. We had that that it was the house called the poverty, right poverty knob. What they called it? Son. Yeah. Huh? They called it what? Poverty knob. Poverty knob. Because they, they were in and they were in poverty at that time. But, oh, that's where they lived. Larry, do you don't remember that? No. Well, Rod, Rod will you tell me the story about Larry going to throw a rock in? Well, he yeah. The, the, the night time we were down there at this little tank, their little pond, and. And Robert came around the back there with a sheet on him, uh, like a ghost, and making these kind of weird noises. And, and Larry goes, I'm going to suck a rock. So, so he was going to suck a rock. But, so he laughed. He's going to save us here. Huh? <laughs> he didn't want to be assaulted. Don't remember that. <laughs> but uh, he was kind of a funny guy. He takes us, to, he was he funny. Takes us to, the, to the car races, you know, occasionally. And, and uh, he's kind of, kind of redneck, you might say. Uncle Brower was always really kind to us, and but you know we did a lot of trips with them. We went to California, and Kettle Gap, and all those things as families. And uh, of course, I, I did remember him drinking quite a bit. Yeah. One of the stories I remember, you probably will put this on the floor. <laughs> but Aunt Frances had a tick on her bowhine. A, a tick. A tick. A tick. On tick. her bowhine. <laughs> and. Uh, so Robert had always thought if you put a match, oh, he'd up you. Yeah, he just back out. Huh? So he put that on there, and of course, it was very painful for uh, Francis. But you might have put that cigar up again. That's what I said. I don't know if he got rid of the tick or not. So y'all probably would throw that one on the floor. But I remember that one. That was hilarious. But Aunt Frances sewed uh, when when my father got ill. Uh, we didn't have any. And I wasn't going to have much of a Christmas. And uh, Aunt Frances uh, sewed some skirts for me for school. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And brought them. And, and first, I, I wasn't as thankful as I should have been because, you know, I was younger and I wanted toys and things, or games and things like that. But then I, later I realized what an, a, a big gift that was yes. for me. So she was really good. And I remember her brushing Patsy Ruth's hair on trips. That poor Patsy's roots hair was always in a tangle, and Aunt Frances was just giving it to <laughs> Just ripped and, through and it. And Patsy's roots eyes were just like, you know. I remember Robert was not very kind, okay, to Aunt Frances also. Well, I have that down. He yeah. was not, and that was one of my things. I wondered how they stayed together yeah. and why. Yeah. Because he was never really kind to her. That's right. And she stuck by him. Yeah, yeah. she's amazing. She's a, she's a sweet lady. She, she was, was, she was, was a giving really person. Sweet. She was a great friend of my mother. Yeah. A great friend of my mother. Yeah, she could cook really good fried oh, chicken. Oh, she could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. She was a sweet lady. Mm -hmm. I remember for a while, Robert worked at the station with Daddy and Deerwood. And every morning that I was there, he would take me in this little tiny cafe hole in the wall, right? Probably about six blocks down in Clarendon. Mm -hmm. We'd go up there and we'd have he'd have his breakfast and I he'd always buy me a donut. <laughs> and every time you're gonna he was get you there, on the day that I didn't already take him. <laughs> <laughs> you go there too, he'd take you there too. <laughs> they would steal the donuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. He worked as a mechanic too for that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he was a good mechanic. I remember that. Yeah, very he was good, very good. good Robert Bly Coffin was born May 16, 1910, and died on November 21, 1982, at 72. He married Hazel Pauline Richardson in 1933. Marjorie Ann Cawthon was born from that union in 1934. Marjorie and a girlfriend were hit by a truck as they crossed the street near her home. They were on their way to a Halloween party. Her friend survived, Marjorie died. She was 11 years old. Robert then married Frances Marie Dolahite in 1940. She was born October 18, 1918, and died March 22, 1980. They had one daughter Patricia, Patsy, Ruth Cawthon. Patsy was born February 16, 1944, and died on December 3, 2007, at age 63. Uncle Robert was a nice guy and a lot of fun to be around. He was most happy when he had a beer in one hand and a fishing pole in the other. Like his siblings he was very sharp mechanically, but unlike them, he lived life on the edge and was a bit of a misfit. Beer, cigars, and fishing were at the top of his priorities. In the early years they lived in Houston. On family trips to Galveston, we would stop at their house. Aunt Frances was an incredibly sweet person and a great cook. She was quick to give you a big smile and a bigger hug. We all have fond memories of those visits. Later Aunt Frances suffered through the aftereffects of cobalt radiation for her cancer. Everyone loved Aunt Frances. Almost everyone loved Uncle Robert.